Asian fusion food seems to have a bad reputation for being a confusing cuisine lacking identity. What do chefs think about Asian fusion food that they cook? Let's find out. Food finders! Hi everyone, welcome to season 5, episode 3. So okay. today we're going to be exploring Asian fusion food in Singapore. So I feel like it does sometimes get a bad rep because people are confused about what it really is. But growing up, um, the kind of Asian fusion food that I've had back in Canada was, you know, like Panda Express, which is completely non-existent in like the Asian world. But I think as years have gone by, it has evolved to like a lot of different exquisite meals and dishes. Some of the best food and meals that I've had in Singapore and outside is actually Asian fusion. Do you think that Asian fusion makes makes food inauthentic? Either inauthentic or uh, what makes it still retain its roots? I feel like if you're looking for authentic Asian food, you know where to go and get them. But for those who are looking for something a little bit different or elevated from the usual, um, you know, cozy meals that you get at home, I think Asian fusion is, um, you can't be expecting like total authenticity. Why mix it? Why mix it? Rather than, yeah, you just have it as authentic. That's a good question. Why do I feel like I'm on an interview? <laughs> For certain like people like myself, right? Like, you know, I love Canadian food. And then I want to bring that into, or I want to bring my background and culture into it. So maybe I'll think of doing something like that where I can combine the best of both worlds. I think a lot of these chefs usually are of a certain ethnic background and then they love a different type of food as well. So they kind of experiment and play around and combine different cuisines. I'm quite excited about checking out the different places today because some of them are actually on my wanna go list. So we're gonna go to our first place. Oh my god, before I step on poop. Welcome to the first restaurant of today. We are at Salt and Palm, which is a wine bar who's doing a little fun twist on modern Asian fusion cuisine, especially cuisine from the East Indies back in the day. It's actually a sibling owned restaurant. So we're gonna check out like, you know, what's different, what different style they're doing that's um, different from the Sydney outlet versus here. And how are they taking on the Asian fusion cuisine style? I'm most excited about their natural wine selection. They have over like 30 selections of natural wines. So I'm excited to try. Let's go! All right, so tell us, Natasha, about you know Salt and Palm and yourself. I'm the creator of uh, this brand called Salt and Palm. So basically, Salt and Palm is inspired by my upbringings in Australia as well as me as an Asian. Because you guys have a Sydney outlet as well. How is it different from a Sydney outlet or how is it similar? Basically, a lot of the recipe is the same um, in terms of the flavors. But in Sydney, it's a lot more simpler, more straightforward. In Singapore, I, I try to be a bit more experimental. Yeah. So we have fish cake here topped with chicken skin tui and then lemongrass chili relish. So both of this are inspired by my childhood growing up in Bali actually. Oh, cool. And then we have this one, our signature dish, prawn bisque pasta, inspired by a dish in Indonesia, michelor. Uh, michelor is a noodle dish from Palembang, okay. but also I see a lot of prawn noodles in Singapore. And we put pasta because why not? And okay. then we have pandan creme brulee and it's actually vegan. What, what's the difference between natural wine? Natural wine basically they do a least intervention, which is they don't really disturb a lot on the wine to so let it ferment itself. Yeah. And more people concerning on the sulfur content inside, right? Actually, grape itself contains sulfur. Basically, you cannot say that that is zero sulfur inside. Just, yeah. just a, no extra sulfur to add in. No synthetic chemical, uh -huh. no pesticide and herbicide. Now we know what natural right. wine is. You could argue actually natural wine is not really a natural? new thing. Oh, okay. It's what wine used to be until there's technology and then it becomes a mass-produced wine that we know now. Cool. Yeah. So Sorry, I'm not... talking about the wow of the, <laughs> of the prawn. I wasn't expecting that. Because okay. I think from the smell, like it smells very Asian. It smells like a hokkien mee or like prawn noodle soup. The taste is like not what, what I was expecting at all. It's actually super umami flavor and um, I really like the bisque, yeah. But I feel like Asian fusion, it's combining two countries' food together. So for example, a Mexican and Japanese and then you make sushi tacos or something. It's oversimplifying a lot of cuisines that are like this. I guess because like the words itself, like Asian fusion came from like America, right? Back in the day. Mm -hmm. Back then, people think, associate maybe that kind of food with just, you know, like the typical American Chinese food. Whereas now I feel like it has evolved 
evolve a lot since then. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, with yeah. chefs like you guys experimenting with different kinds of like your own cuisine with like Western cuisine or whatnot, but it obviously it's a lot more complex than what people think it is, right? True, true, true. I love natural wine. It's not acidic. The typical rosés are always a bit too acidic for me. Like it takes away from the flavor of the food. So this actually pairs surprisingly pretty well. Like it's, it doesn't have an aftertaste. Should we do this? What is this on top? It's chicken skin. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really interesting. I've never had it like this before. It's like a prawn cracker almost. It's actually inspired by a Balinese mother mother sauce. It's called Masakunap. In general, it has yeah. garlic, chili, eschalots, lemongrass, lime leaves, shrimp paste, pepper, nutmeg, coriander seeds, turmeric, galangal. That one bite has a lot of things happening. A lot of this is inspired by what I'm most familiar with at the moment, which is like Indonesian cuisine. But sometimes I play with ingredients as well. In Australia, there's a tradition of Sunday roast. Roast pork of any kind is always a favorite. But I feel like, oh, why not combine that with what I also grew up with, which is babi guling. Yeah. That's why it also has like a little bit of gravy sauce in it as well. It actually reminds me of babi guling, but like less, like less heavy. They're always, you know, kind of oily, like always like very, a bit more heavier. I would say that this is the lighter version, right? It's very delicious. The pork is really tender. Okay, I'm excited. Mm. It's almost like a pudding, like, or like mm. a very soft pudding. It's like not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Like I thought it was going to be more of a custard kind of mm. creme brulee. Yeah. Is it because it's like vegan? That's yeah, why it's hard to make custard. Creme brulee by right is supposed to use well eggs and cream. cream. I personally like cooking vegan food. Oh, I just how come you like cooking vegan food? There's a lot of challenge in making things vegan without making it Not taste tasty, a bit right? weird. Yeah. yeah, it requires a lot of creative thinking. I like challenges. So. Well, I had a really good meal. I feel like they're very unique but also familiar. I like like I love the small dishes as well. Thank you so much for having us. No All right, allowing me to it's my eat, eat a meal with you sitting right beside me. <laughs> so I think we're gonna wrap up here. I love the wines as well. Hoping to come back for more natural wines. So we'll see you at the next stop. <laughs> Welcome to the second place. We're here in Dempsey. We're actually at a very hidden kind of little restaurant called Morsels. If you don't really come around this area, you would totally miss it. But actually, it's a cute little cottage core little barnyard um, restaurant where they do a lot of Asian fusion cuisine. So we're going to be checking their dishes out today. They're known for small plates and very experimental plates as well. Okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Petrina. I'm the chef owner of Mosso's. Basically what Mosso's is, is an Asian fusion small plates place. I really didn't like eating things in big portions. Um, I used to live in America and everything came in a really big portion. I mean, I'm Chinese and I really like eating, you know, small plates, like how we eat in some. And what's the, like, the inspiration behind this cozy cottage kind of core, <laughs> interior decor? Um, I think the whole idea is to actually just be welcoming. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm cooking for people in my own home. Yeah. I just really wanted to host people where it's a comfortable setting. And you love ferment, like experimenting with fermentation as well. Um, I think why I started this fermentation journey a lot has to do with my own health. I have a very bad gut, you know, being very mm -hmm. regular with meals, and I found that just eating fermented foods really like helped me a lot. And that's where I started like, oh, you know, you know, maybe we can put it more in our food. Yeah. We have all these dishes in front of us. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can share just a little bit about each. Um, the middle is actually a refreshing uh, CBJ. I'm sure a lot of people know what CBJ is. It's usually CBJ. like a Latin style. Yeah. But over here, uh, I take the inspiration from a, from a Thai uh, soup, Tom Ka. Okay. So it's uh, basically Tom Yam but with coconut milk and uh, we season it with uh, green oil for some refreshing like you know punchy ar aromatics. And uh, our crackers here are actually like pulu itam mm -hmm. with sago, so uh, homemade. Then we move on to the next dish over here is a soup dish that I took inspiration from Vietnam. Uh, we use Boston Bay um, mussels. Wow. It's actually quite salty, but it's salty on its own. Like we don't have to do much to it. But yeah. the broth is quite Vietnamese in some sense because they like to use Sprite in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there Sprite in there? There is oh. some Sprite in there. Um, but actually we make it from a lot of dried um, Seafood. On the side there, we actually have instead of your normal garlic bread, we mm -hmm. actually make uh, a kimchi butter. Um, the last one actually we have uh, abanico pork. Uh, I think most people mm -hmm. are either familiar with secreto or like the pluma. Mm -hmm. So abanico is like basically like the flank part of the pork. Underneath we have lentils. I always like to put my pro uh, proteins with some kind of grain. I think Lighter. what's special about the sauce here is actually made uh, from kimchi. Oh wow! So it's actually like everything. Kimchi. 
<laughs> yeah, it's our homemade. Kimchi. <laughs> it's, our hip, it's our homemade kimchi yeah. with um, pork juice. Can you tell us what does Asian fusion food mean to you? I think Asian fusion cuisine um, is not simply taking like A sauce, putting in B sauce. You really need to understand different cultures, why people eat certain things the way they eat. This pork is quite fatty. Mm. Uh, the reason why I put kimchi to it, it, it just cuts the richness mm. of the pork, the fattiness. So to me, it's really like creating something that's exciting at the same time. It's not like just A plus B, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Joy wants to try the food. I am. Uh, my, my fork <laughs> is almost touching the pork. Yeah. Yeah. Which which uh, I recommend start? starting with, with the scallop CBJ because yeah. yeah. it's kind of like a refreshing, yes. and then go to the mussels, and then uh, finish with the pork. Right. Put it like. It has the acidity that I usually like with ceviche because some are just not acidic as well, at, at all and I don't like that but also pretty sweet. The sweetness actually comes from the scallop. I mean Hokkaido scallops are like kind of sweet. We also put in this like apple, some crunchy Yeah, I because, can taste you know, the like, fruit, right? Yeah, because like scallops can be a little bit like non-textural. It's yeah. soft, right? Oh, Moving on. Switch it over. The soup is really, really light, um, but very fragrant. This is definitely like an Asian soup with yeah. like, you know, yeah. Western mussels or something yeah. like so that. So it's quite comforting, you know, mm -hmm. like we run an a la carte menu here. So if that you just feel like you want a comfortable or something, have a glass of wine, you can just pop in, you know, and yeah. just... I forgot that this had butter on it, like the kimchi butter that you're talking about, right? Mm. But I can't taste the kimchi as much though. Yeah, it's not meant to, but it gives you that umami which binds really well when you drink with mm. it. The soup taste comes first, then the butter taste comes after. Yeah. Like I don't taste it together because usually garlic butter, garlic strong. bread is pretty strong, strong and yeah. it comes right away. All right, last dish. Oh, there's like a smoky taste. Mm. It's from uh, cooking on a hibachi, so mm. with um, benjotan. Oh wow. Oh, that's good. It has cooled down a little bit, but I can imagine how it would taste like when it was hot. Like you said that it was fatty, but it, I don't really um, feel like it's too much fat actually. So the fat for this particular cut is quite well integrated into the meat itself. So it's not like one piece of fat on top and then in, in the meat itself. It's like familiar flavors that make you feel at home, but with different kinds of food. I've never been here, but I feel like I definitely will need to bring my friends back or like, you know, my husband to come try all the different dishes. I really like love the decor as well because it's super cozy, great for date nights. So thank you, Chef Thanks Katrina, for, coming, yeah. for sharing with us your journey and all the dishes. We'll be back. We'll see you soon with some wine. Yes, with some <laughs> wine. We're moving on to the next place. Hey, so we're now at the last spot of the day, the Paddington. I'm wondering if it's a play on word between Paran and Paddington. So we'll ask the owners there later. But actually, it's just owned by, you know, four cousins. It's a Muslim-owned restaurant and they have a love for Padan, Nasi Padan, and they want to do something different with it. With almost like, I don't know, British food? Because it seems like they do have some like beef Wellington, similar dishes as well as Pulu Sushi. What is this thing? Oh, maybe it is a Wellington. Oh my god, yeah, it's a yeah, beef wooly tent! It's Padan and beef wooly I am the smart. We're here with one of the owners of the Paddington. And then so I need to know okay. why is the name called Paddington? Okay, so the actually the dish uh you got from the uh, the beef Wellington itself, but we only want to make it into an Indonesian twist where the lamb shank is actually cooked in a uh, rendang padang sauce. Okay. And then we actually uh, wrap it with pastry, uh -huh. something like the beef Wellington. Okay. But it's an uh, Asian thing of it. So yeah. it is kind of padang and Wellington. Correct. Oh my god, the sushi! This is the thing that I'm most intrigued about. This dish is actually only served during uh, celebrations like wedding, pass exams. Yeah. If you don't pass exam, you don't get food. <laughs> Why that fusion like between Indonesian and you know yeah. Western food? Western food, okay. Because uh, we feel that when we are younger, we are used to all this uh, traditional food. And then as the generations come and you know, we uh, westernize that. But we don't want our kids and the younger generation to lose touch of the tradition. Food. Okay, the sushi honestly was inspired by my the other owner who loves sushi. He will travel to Japan just to eat sushi. Oh wow! Okay. And then we were thinking, hey, why not we make put rendang into the pulut uh -huh. and make it into like a sushi style, sweet and uh, spicy gricon. And it's inspired by this guy at the roadside. Uh, roadside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then there's a special sauce which I actually asked him how. Yeah, you stole so his is, recipe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, gulai padang crab pasta, uh, Italian mix with it. Yeah. Uh, this is we cook it with uh, gulai padang with crab meat. Okay, this is the classic uh, nasi uh, rendang set. It comes with the uh, fried egg, bagadil, fried liver. Okay. Okay, and then the salad, and of course the uh, authentic rendang padang. Okay, this is the whole lamb shank, yeah. also cooked in a uh, rendang sauce, and this is also cooked about for eight hours. It's supposed to when you pull it off, the bone is supposed to just come out, and all the meat will be staying inside. Oh my god! Wow. 
shake it a bit. Shake? Wiggle it a bit. Wiggle, yeah, wiggle. put it off. I'm amazed. What? Why, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing behind the scenes? Do I look like a barbarian? Oh, it's really good. Thank you so much. I really like the taste. It's a little bit sweet. Not too spicy. Yeah, because, I can uh, taste the spice though. Because naturally, lamb is uh, sweet. Yeah. Well, I feel like the pastry is really fl um, flaky and crispy, just like a normal beef Wellington. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. With the beef rendang, mm -hmm. I think, or the lamb lamb, lamb one, it's so, like, it's really unique. Should I combine all of them together? Yeah. The rendang was just stronger than the lamb one. It'll be more, I feel like, robust. No, I know what you mean, because this one with this is much lighter, lighter and sweeter. Yes. But this, I, it's uh, more umami and like spicier Correct. as well. Correct. And the funny thing is that we cook it the same way. It's the, the same sauce, exactly. It's the sauce. same sauce, but it turned out different because of the meat. Okay, sushi. With a bit of the sauce, right? Yeah. This looks spicy. Oh, the chili's not as spicy as I thought it no, would be. No, no, it's not. The green one is uh, the, actually the mildest. This is uh, actually pretty good because I thought it would just be the palu. I mean, like, they find out inside palu, but the <laughs> taste um, mixes together pretty well. I, I like the creaminess of the sauce. It doesn't remind me, like, too much of a carbonara because it's quite stringy, but it's actually also really good. <laughs> Should we try the last bit, corn? What is the sweet sauce? They cook it with chili, uh, then it's got, you know, gula melaka. Gula melaka? Gula melaka, yes. Oh, maybe I feel like maybe the sauce could be a like, bit more evenly distributed. I do taste like the spicy and the sweetness of it in like, you know, certain parts, but I think the full taste doesn't come out as much for me. <laughs> I think the fusion dishes have surprised me a lot, especially the padantan. I think this is definitely your best dish. Like, I really like it. I think the pastry is also very well done. The lamb shank with the sauce is actually something that I really like. So thank you so much for having us and sharing us, sharing with us the story. You're most welcome. I'm going home now. I'm done. <laughs> Yay! I'm going home with dinner! <laughs> Seth is now back in the scene! Yes. What is Asian fusion to you? Have you learned anything? It has evolved a lot and I like what the chefs are doing nowadays, like experimenting with different cuisines and flavor profiles. That's what I actually now think of Asian fusion as. It gets a bad rep, the words themselves, but I do think that it has evolved so much since then, so people should just let it go. The reason why it gets a bad rep is really because of the oversimplifying of the concept of fusion. I, I think today we've seen that there are a lot of modern techniques and ways to do it. It's not that simple. I have two favorite dishes from today. First one is from the first restaurant, Salt and Palm, which is the prawn bisque. I was caught off guard by the flavors and how great it was. I honestly was really surprised. And the second one is the ceviche from uh, Morsels. The coconut flavor that she added was just so different from whatever I had before. Pork pochetta, I thought that was very good for me. The padang turn, that was really good. That I is... think that was such a standout for me as well. Super tender, amazing flavors on the rendang. Okay, so <coughs> if you would like us to explore any other kind of food culture or question that you have, uh, do leave us a comment. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Subscribe and comment. Okay, bye. Bye. See you guys next time. Bye, bye, bye.